What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Uh, today I had a question that was asked uh, that I'm going to answer. That is, why do we bond metal boxes but we don't bond plastic boxes? Now, before we get started, I wanna remind everybody, you can go to electricianu.com. We have a whole bunch of classes that you can take. We even have one-on-one -on -one tutoring so you can get in with an instructor so you don't have to sit in an entire class. Uh, but there's one-on-one -on -one tutoring, there's classes, so go check out our class schedule at electricianu.com. All right, now this may seem like a relatively straightforward thing for those that are in the know, but as I do not believe in the phrase common sense, I think common sense is only common to those who it is common to, uh, people that have the same kind of knowledge. So there's a lot of people that just don't know. Um, so they don't know what to do with the grounds and, and they get in a metal box and they're like, well, if we don't do it for the plastic boxes, like who cares if we do it for the metal boxes? But that's not correct. So let's look in code. the National Electrical Code, if you look in Article 250 under grounding and bonding, look at the very, very beginning of it. We're gonna be in 250.4a uh, under grounded systems. So usually we're working on grounded systems. Grounded just means there's a neutral. Not always, sometimes there are things that are grounded that aren't neutrals, but usually we are talking about a neutral when we say a grounded system. When we're talking about grounding, we're talking about the grounding conductor. We are, uh, you know, the, the conductor that goes out to a piece of equipment and hooks to the metal stuff. That's what we out in the field call a ground, but it's the grounding conductor. Um, in code, they call the neutral the grounded conductor, but they also, understand that there are some things that you ground that are not a neutral and they are still grounded conductors. So that whole thing is gonna be really confusing. Just always remember in code, they're talking about ungrounded and grounded being the hot and most of the time the neutral and the grounding conductor, the one with the ING is talking about the actual ground that we talk about out in the field as a ground. So in 250.4a, uh, we have a three, which is bonding of electrical equipment. And it says, normally non-current carrying conductive materials enclosing electrical conductors or equipment or forming part of such equipment shall be connected together and to the electrical supply source in a manner that establishes an effective ground fault current path. Okay, so what is an effective ground fault current path? For that, we have to go back to Article 100 under the definitions, go to the E's. And we have effective ground fault current path, which is an intentionally constructed, low impedance electrically conductive path designed and intended to carry current under ground fault conditions from the point of a ground fault on a wiring system to the electrical supply source. And that facilitates the operation of the overcurrent protective device or ground fault detectors. So basically we have to connect anything metal around uh, electrical equipment just in case something happens. Um, sometimes terminations come loose, sometimes things overheat, conductors break or burn or terminations, you know, go bad. In an electrical circuit, nothing ever happens in the middle of the circuit, right? Conductors don't just like break in the middle. They're always at a termination point or a problem spot. Uh, you could have a place in the middle of a circuit where there's corrosion that's introduced to the circuit. And yes, at that point, since there's something weird going on at that specific point, you could have have damage to a conductor and it could break. But the vast majority of the time out in the field that you're gonna come across problems, it's never in the middle of the wire. It's always at a termination point where heat is starting to build up because of a loose termination or you know some, something's failing in that circuit. So when we bring conductors uh, out to a piece of equipment, we have to run a ground, but the ground doesn't run to the equipment. The ground always runs to the metal that's surrounding that equipment. So people are like, well, isn't just a ground just like a backup neutral? No, a neutral is intended to always have current on it, uh, or maybe not always, but it's supposed to uh, afford for there to be current on it and it will carry an imbalance if that's the case uh, between a bunch of different circuits. But uh, it's not, a ground is different. A ground or an equipment grounding conductor, as they call it in code, is always meant to not have current on it. And the only time that it should have current on it is if a ground fault occurs. And what that is, is 
uh, let's say a hot conductor, um, just for some reason it's a loose termination or something like that, and it just flops off and it hits the case, the metal enclosure that all those conductors are in, well that metal case would then become energized and it would have potential between that and anything else that you might touch. So if you go to touch that piece of metal and you touch something else and you give current a path through your body to travel uh, all the way back to the source, you can become uh, electrocuted, shocked. Uh, so it's a really dangerous thing to have the metal enclosures that we are hooking up live electrical conductors to not grounded. So without the ground, the equipment grounding conductor, the, uh, the, the hazard or the, the danger of getting electrocuted is extremely high. So what we do is we run an equipment grounding conductor out to any kind of metal anywhere that's around electrical conductors that could possibly become energized so that if we were to touch them, we're not gonna get electrocuted. If anything were to you know, flop off a hot, were to flop off and like hit, uh, let's say a wash machine. Um, I use this example all the time, uh, but that wash machine is hooked to this ground conductor and that ground goes all the way back to the service and it's bonded to the neutral. So if something were to flop off of you know, a termination and hit the case of that electrical equipment, we have a effective ground fault means or an effective ground fault path through that equipment grounding conductor or ground that goes all the way back and goes up to the transformer and it makes a complete circuit so that it will trip a breaker because current is now allowed to flow and in a ground fault or a short circuit situation, a ton of current is gonna flow all at one time. So that breaker is probably gonna get way over 200% of its rating of current flowing through it. So it's gonna pop immediately because there's a completed circuit. Now, if the neutral and the ground at the service are not bonded together, then a breaker is not going to trip. You're just going to have an energized ground conductor and it's really dangerous. So in the situation where we're in a commercial building and we're using metal boxes everywhere, we've got like these, uh, what we down in the South called 1900 boxes, um, we will put you know devices and things in that. We'll run our MC in it, we put a mud ring over it, um, and then we put a device in that metal box. So that metal box itself has to be bonded because it said in our uh, definition in 250, normally non current carrying conductive materials, enclosing electrical conductors or equipment, uh, or forming such as a part of the equipment. So uh, that is any boxes around any kind of electrical conductors, that's equipment that are metal themselves. Um, you'll see things like pool equipment, you know, we run an equipment ground inside of the thing uh, and hook that up, but there's also usually a grounding conductor that goes at, to, uh, to the body or the frame of the pump itself. So anything metal, uh, and the reason in a switch box or in a, a receptacle box, um, what, the reason that we bring a ground in there is to hook up to the metal strap of the device. So you'll notice a duplex receptacle has plastic all around it. It's pretty much a plastic device, but the strap or what we call the yoke in code uh, is the thing that holds it onto the box. So there's still metal on or around the, uh, the devices themselves. So we have to make sure that that metal strap is connected um, to all of the rest of the metal parts. And the box that is enclosing all of the conductors also has to be bonded. So let's go over to the board real quick. I'll just show the whole like complete circuit thing and, and talk a little bit more about that. All right, so let's review a little bit about how a completed circuit works and all of this stuff. So from a receptacle, we have to have a completed circuit, right? We have current that goes down on our hot out of a breaker in a panel, goes to one of our gold screws, and then out of the silver screws comes back to the neutral and then goes back to the transformer. So up at the transformer, they're actually connected as well. We'll get into that in a second. But when somebody plugs a piece of equipment, they connect the neutral through the piece of equipment to the black. That is how just a standard circuit works. And without those being connected, there's just potential, there's voltage, but there's not actually any current that's able to flow. So the green conductor is really just there to protect anything that's metal in case one of these two conductors comes off or something happens where they touch the metal box and now this metal box is part of the circuit. Um, so you'll notice that the green goes back to green over here and it's not actually part of neutral. So if this is uh, a, a panel where we don't have neutral and ground bonded together, this metal enclosure, the metal strap, everything would just remain uh, energized or not even energized it'll have potential. There won't be any current flowing on it because it's not actually connected to neutral. And the only way that we get a breaker uh, to trip is if we have a completed circuit 
um, through the load or through your body or anything that is in that uh, circuit to actually help it be conductive. So in services, what we do is we take this ground and we uh, bond it to the neutral. So now, say that this, uh, this hot actually breaks and it comes in contact with this metal. Well, now there's a path through the metal, through this metal, and into this green uh, equipment grounding conductor and then it has a path all the way back and goes over here keeps going through finds neutral and now it's able to go back and complete the circuit so you have the circuit going out on black coming through the metal coming back and so much current is going to go through that at one time but that breaker over here is going to detect way more than 20 amps and boom it's going to magnetically rip apart um, so that's how that's why we have that conductor to begin with look at this whole like completed circuit through a piece of equipment. A lot of people don't like look at circuits this way. They don't see the, the kind of like expanded outside picture. But say we have a transformer out at the street. Really all that we're doing is we've got our primary coil and it's completely isolated from the secondary. So at a transformer, there's not, your conductors at a house don't go up and hit a transformer and get connected to the lines that go uh, back to the utility. There actually is an air gap, there's a separation. So we'll get into that in a later video about mutual induction and all of that and how it works. But there's a completed circuit on the secondary side of this that goes to your house. So if we didn't have the breakers there in a panel, we could literally just hook up right from the transformer, black all the way over to a wash machine, hook the red all the way over the washer machine, and now we have a completed circuit. We've got a 120 volt circuit here, we have another 120 volt circuit here, we have a 240 volt circuit. Not all dryers are gonna have a neutral. There's a lot of three wire ones that just have a black and a red in the ground. But you'll notice I didn't draw the ground with the circuit. So if for some reason, uh, one of these conductors just broke and touch the case of this thing, this whole thing is gonna become energized and the ground as well. But it doesn't matter, there's no current that's gonna flow. So how do we trip a breaker with that? Well, we have to hook it up to uh, an actual neutral to get that uh, current to have somewhere to go so that it has a complete circuit. So it can go boom and all the way through here. So the whole point of the ground is just to make sure that that case has a way to come back to the neutral so that a completed circuit can be made. Otherwise, it's just gonna sit there energized. And if you touch between that energized case and the wrong thing, you can send current through your body. So another example I figured it'd just be easier to draw like in a house, same kind of thing though. We've just got our two ungrounded hot conductors that come through a panel, go to a piece of equipment. We've got a neutral, that neutral may or may not go out to this piece of equipment. I drew some yellow in between so you could see the neutral and ground are bonded. Um, and But say we have a fault here at this a piece of equipment. Now we have a path that current can take and it's gonna go all the way on this black, go through the piece of equipment, go through the ground, and it wouldn't trip the breaker if it was just energized and if there was no bond between our ground and our neutral. It has to get over to neutral to make a completed circuit so that it can go through the breaker and trip. So that's why we bond our grounds and our neutrals together. And now we have a full completed circuit with these electrical charges just flying as fast as they can through this thing at way too high of current. And if there wasn't a breaker there, it would just keep going and getting so hot to the point where this conductor would just melt the insulation and probably start liquefying and uh, it, we'd have a huge hazard. Um, eventually it would burn down, it would burn itself out um, at whatever the weakest points are in the system so that it could disconnect itself. But that's how the completed circuit thing works. Um, so in the case of the metal boxes and the blue boxes, you know, the blue plastic boxes or PVC boxes, whatever you're, you're buying at Home Depot, um, these blue boxes, there's no conductive parts to them. So in code, it says any non, uh, normally non-current carrying conductive parts or uh, enclosures around equipment. So because it's plastic, we don't have to hook that ground to anything. We just go right from the ground to the device. But in the case of a metal box, that's why we have to bring this green because this box is metal and the strap on this thing is metal. So we have to make sure that we, you know, wrap our conductor around there, or have put a little bonding jumper or something so that that box itself, once this is all put back together, if something were to happen, a ground fault were to happen and, you know, conductor flops off and hits the box itself, it'll trip the breaker. Or if it hits, you know, like the strap on here, it'll trip the breaker. Sometimes there's metal covers and things like that um, that we also have to put like a clip on and make sure that we're bonding the metal cover too, because again, it is just metal that is surrounding or around electrical conductors that are live. Wait, 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 before you go, make sure you get your U-Crew merch. So we've got Electrician U shirts right now. We've got a whole bunch of variations of hats. So if you want just
just the Electrician U EU logo, or you can get the U Crew if you want to be part of the U Crew. Come on, uh, but go get your merch right now. Uh, we sell out very, very quickly, so they're for a limited time only. So get your merch and become one of the dorks like us. All right, so I hope that that helps. Uh, again, I know that for advanced people that have been doing this for a while, it's a pretty simple video, um, but just understand the neutral and the ground, completely different things. One is uh, designed to carry current um, in, in a lot of situations, even though you might not want to have current on it, you wanna have a fully balanced system, but it is designed to carry current. Um, and therefore it can be classified as a current carrying conductor. So in that way, it's a little bit more like an ungrounded conductor or a hot than it is like a ground. So let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments below. Uh, love you crazy people and I will see you in the next one. Best can to music and video.